Praise the living God. Praise the living God. Praise the living God. Beloved, you are most welcome to God's own Lex Wait and Prayer. This morning we are here as a little God to pray and to also study the word of God. Praise the living God. And I welcome every one of you. Hallelujah. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen. Today we have a very interesting topic to treat. And the topic is, I thought I knew him. I thought I knew him. Hallelujah. And I believe that before we are done with this topic, you will be a blessing. Hallelujah. And the Lord will open your eyes to many things that you need to know. Hallelujah. God richly bless you, Mama Ecolina. You are most welcome in Jesus' mighty name. But let us pray before we enter into our Bible studies. Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. We give time to you. We bless your holy name for all that you've done for us, Lord. We are so grateful for bringing us to your presence to study your word and to pray. It is our prayer that we will understand everything that you are teaching us, that at the end of the day, we'll be able to apply them rightly in our life, that, Lord, my God, uh, when you come, we'll be able to give good account to you. This is what we ask from you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We also pray for our brothers and sisters who are to join us. Father, Lord, may you, Lord, my God, be with them, protect them, deliver them, and bring them to, 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 to us, and so that with one accord we can we can study and pray together. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you. We bless you. We adore your holy name. Wonderful. God richly bless every one of you. God richly bless every one of you. In Jesus' mighty name. As I said, the topic is, I thought I knew him. I thought I knew him. Hallelujah. Yes. No, I was born into a Christian home. I was trained with this Christian faith that we are holding on to. Praise the Lord. And um, uh, I grew up in it. I was dedicated child because my father was a priest. Hallelujah. And he trained us with God-fearing. And we have been in it till I grew up. Hallelujah. And uh, I started working. When I was working one day, when I was working, um, I had a voice talking to me that I want to use you for my work. Or the Lord actually called me at the office. I was a sound, a sound engineer, so I work it mostly. I work in the night because I have a, get a good time and a cool time to do the mixing and everything uh, in the studio. So that night I was working alone in the studio, mixing some songs, and then I heard a voice talking to me that he is calling me into the ministry. And when the voice talked to me, he said, I did not, I, I, he said, I am calling you into the ministry but you do not know me. Though you do not know me, but I'm calling you into my ministry. So I knew that this is the voice of God. And uh, I, I was arguing in my heart that how can God told me, told me that I don't know him because uh, I have been born into a Christian home, I have been trained with this Bible and everything. I read the Bible and I'm very dedicated. So... At this point in time that you are telling me that I don't know you, uh, I, I didn't. I didn't take it. I was not. I was not. No, in agreement with what he said. Praise the Lord. But the Lord did not continue with that statement again. He just went on and said whatever he wanted to say to me. And as time goes on, I had to agree with the calling of the Lord. In fact, it took some time because I didn't want to. Uh, respond to it because my, my my vision is to become a great musician. Hallelujah. Yes. That is why I learned engineering work so that I can work on my own songs. Praise the Lord. And uh, it happened that the Lord, one way or the other, was able to take me out of the studio and then I started the ministry. Praise the Lord. And then we have been a ministry from 2001, 2001, 
that was the, when the calling came. And then I started the ministry, praise the Lord, until 2021, before the Lord made me to understand why he told me that I did not know him. Praise the Lord. I did not know that knowing Christ based on certain principle. And then the principle is that to know Christ is to keep his commandments. I did not know that to know Christ is to keep his commandments. Praise the Lord. And It is just recently, about a year ago, when the Lord took us from the city and began to teach us how to know him better. That's when he gave me a scripture that I have to learn how to know him. Hallelujah. And that this scripture is found in the book of 1 John chapter 2, verse 3 to 4. He says, Now, by this we know that we know him. If we keep his commandment, he who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandment is a liar. And, there is, and the truth is not in him. Praise the Lord. As I said from the beginning, I was born into Christian life, a Christian faith. I was trained in, uh, in it. I grew up in it. I read Bible. I was dedicated. I was devotional. This scripture that I have read it many times. But I never, I never knew that it means something different. What I knew was that Keeping the commandment of Christ is, be, is to keep the Ten Commandments. And most Christians of today believe in the same thing. Praise the Lord. Most Christians of today believe in the same thing. Hallelujah. And so, many Christians believe that this scripture is talking about the Ten Commandments, how to keep the Ten Commandments. But that is wrong. Hallelujah. That is wrong. Hallelujah. It is not talking about Ten Commandments here. It is talking about the new commandment that the Lord Jesus Christ gave to his disciples. Praise the Lord. When you check through the scriptures, you understand that before Jesus Christ who died on the cross, he gave two main commandments to his disciples. And this is the commandment he wants every Christian to live by. The first commandment he gave is found in the book of John chapter 6 verse 28 to 29. It says, Then they said to him, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered and said to him, to them, This is the work of God that you believe in him who sent. Let me take it again. Jesus answered and said to him, to them, This is the work of of God that you believe in him who he sent. So when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ or believe in his name, you have done the work of God. The work of God that you have to do or the love that you have to show towards God for God to know that you love him. Bible says, Jesus Christ said, this work of God is just belief in Christ. When you do that, you have done the work of God. 
Praise the Lord. Very interesting. And then the second commandment is found in the book of John chapter 13, verse 34. It says, A new commandment I gave to you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. This is another commandment that Jesus Christ gave to the disciples. So, in all, he gave them two main commandments. Praise the Lord. Mm. Apostle John spoke about this commandment. And he indicated that when we live by this commandment, that is when we will be able to please God. Let's see from the book of 1 John chapter 3, verse 22 to 23. It says, And whatever we ask, we receive from him. Because we keep his commandments. Wonderful. And do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Yes. And he continues and say, And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. So, Apostle John also made it clear that these are the two commandments that when we keep it, we please God. God is happy with it. So in all, the Lord Jesus Christ gave us these two commandments. That first we should believe in his name or believe in him. And then keep the commandment concerning love. Love one another as I have loved you. These are the two commandments that when you live by it, then you know Christ. Hallelujah. Hmm. Hmm. Then the question is why new commandment? Why new commandment? The answer is this. According to Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 31, the people of Israel who received the Ten Commandments could not keep it. Who received the law could not keep it. And so Jeremiah said, God spoke through Jeremiah and said, I will change it. Let's read it. He said, Jeremiah 33 verse, uh, 31 verse 31, he says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. The covenant here means Ten Commandments. Because when you read the Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 13, it says, it indicates that when we talk about a covenant, it's about Ten Commandments. And so God said, I am coming to change it and give a new one. That means he's coming to change the new Ten Commandments and give a new one to us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good. So he said, uh, I'll do a new covenant, covenant because he, he, he continued and said, verse 32 says, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant they broke, though I was a husband to them, says the Lord. So this with this, we got to know that the covenant is the Ten Commandment. And so God said, I've come to change it. That means he, you will change the commandment and give us a new commandment. That is what exactly the Lord Jesus Christ came to do. And then change the covenant or which is the Ten Commandment and give us a new commandment. Praise the Lord. Uh, yes. And I want us to notice that when we talk about the Ten Commandments, Ten Commandments is all about love towards God and love towards man. So it is true love. Love towards God and love towards man. Praise the Lord. And that is what the Lord Jesus Christ summary or summarize it. Praise the Lord. Summarize it in the book of um, um, Matthew chapter 22 verse 30, 37. Matthew 37, it says, Jesus said to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. The, and, the, 
and the second is like the, like it. You shall love one. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and then prophet. So the Lord Jesus Christ uh, bringing the Ten Commandments to an end means this great law, which is love towards God, love towards man, has been brought to an end. And for that matter, all the laws and then and then prophets has also come to an end. Hallelujah. That is the point. That is why the Lord had to give us a new commandment. A new commandment. Praise the Lord. And he gave the new commandment to us. And first one is believe in me. And the second one is believe. Uh, the second one is love one another as I have loved you. This is the two commandments given to us. And Apostle John said, when we obey this command, keep this commandment, it means we are doing the will of the Father. And Father is pleased with our our, our doings and everything that we do in this love. Praise the Lord. Now, so this is the reason why when the apostle, apost, uh, apostles or when the Pharisee believers suggested that they should go back to the Old Testament commandment with the Ten Commandments and everything in it, the apostles rejected it. They rejected the idea. When you read the book of Acts chapter 15, verse 5, the, the Pharisee who believed also suggested to the apostles that they should go back to the Old Testament commandment. Praise the Lord. Ten commandment and everything, the laws. And then the apostles said, no, we cannot do that. They rejected it. Praise the Lord. In fact, Apostle Peter said that this commandment is a yoke that our fathers could not carry. And we ourselves could not carry. Why do you want to put it on the on the neck of the of the of the disciples? When we read Acts chapter 15, 1 down to 10, you get that thing there. Hallelujah. So they rejected. That is the main reason why the apostles rejected that suggestion from the Pharisees. Hallelujah. And then second is that the, that must be the also the reason why the apostles never taught tithes. Why? Hallelujah. Never taught the church to practice titan. Why? Because the titan is also part of the commandment from the mountain Sinai. Hallelujah. When you read the book of Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30 to 34, it indicates clear that a, a titan is also part of the commandment from mountain Sinai. So when apostles teach that thing, they are pushing people back to the law, the yoke that they could not carry. Praise the Lord. They are going back to the law. So they never taught that from the book of Acts. That is where the church just started. That is where the apostles started teaching. Hallelujah. They never taught anybody to pay tight. Just go and read all the scriptures. Praise the Lord. If, if the, 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 even the book of Hebrews talk about tight, but was using it to say something different. He was not telling people to pay tight. And uh, pastors want to capitalize on those but small portion there to tell people that they should pay tithe. That's wrong doctrine. The apostles never taught the church. There's no record. You see that the apostles were teaching about giving, 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 sharing, and all those things. They never taught about tithe. Because you know what? When they try it, they are taking people back to the law. So never try it. Hallelujah. And the new consequence of taking somebody to the law, the consequence, hallelujah, because Apostle Peter himself said, when you do that, you are testing God. Hallelujah. You are testing God. So why do you want to test God? By putting a yoke that we could not carry, our father or no, no us could carry on the people. Praise the Lord. And another point is that that is also the reason why when the Pharisees, uh, listen, in the church in Gal Gal Galatian, Galatian church, the Galatian church tried to go back to the Lord. Apostle Paul told them that they have come out from or they have departed from Christ or the grace and then and then and then 
give themselves to another gospel. Let's see, read from the book of Galatians chapter 1 verse 6. It says, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. The moment you mingle the law with the, with the true gospel, it becomes a different gospel. It's like you, you fetch a water and you drop in one poison. One drop of poison. Hallelujah. The water is not the same anymore. Praise the Lord. So, uh, the people began to observe the law. Hallelujah. Apostle Paul told them that I, I, am, I, I marvel at your action. That you have just gone so soon from the grace. From the one who called you into the grace. That means they have departed from Christ. They have departed from God. And they are now giving themselves to a different gospel. Praise the Lord. What, what, what did they do? What did they do? Uh, Pastor Paul wrote that into what did they do? When you read the Gal Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3 is continu continuation of what Apostle Paul was talking about. Chapter 3 says, Oh, fully Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Hallelujah. You should not obey the truth. Be before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. This, uh, this only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Hallelujah. So actually these people, uh, the issue is about the law and faith. It's not about idol worship. Some people try to say that they are doing the idol worship. That is why Apostle Paul wrote to them. No, that is a lie. That is not the truth. The truth that the issue is about the law and the faith. And these people went back to the law. Praise the Lord. That's why Apostle Paul told them that you have departed from the grace and then you are now observing the law. You have departed from them. So the moment you choose to, uh, you choose to uh, observe one of the law, you are departed from the grace. Praise the Lord. You have departed from the grace. Hallelujah. That is a serious thing here. Hallelujah. Now, the question, how did they know? That, how did Apostle Paul? Paul know that these people have departed from grace because they started observing days and seasons according to the book of Galatians chapter 4, the same continuation of this issue. He says, chapter 4, let's read from verse 8. He says, but then, indeed, when you did not know God, you serve those which by nature are not God's. So observing a day means you are set, you are, you are, you are seeing that day as a God. That is what Apostle Paul is telling them. Observing a day, you are seeing that, that day as a God. So in the Gentile world, they were also having their holidays, which they observe them as holy. And that is that means you have made that day a God on you to control you. That is why when Jesus Christ was 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 being disturbed by the Pharisees and trying to say that you don't observe the, the Sabbath, he told them that I am the Lord over the Sabbath. I am the Lord over the Sabbath. Sabbath is not Lord over me. Praise the Lord. That means when you make any day as holy day special to you, that day has become a Lord over you. And so Paul said, as you, when you were Gentiles, you were doing this thing and serving those things as gods, but they are not gods. You know the reason why? No. Even in our days that we have Sunday, uh, uh, Sunday, Monday, and uh, Tuesday, all these things have been named according to the the, the idol, the name, uh, the names of idol. They have named these days after some idols, some demons. So Sunday they stand for Sun God. Monday stand for Moon God, and other gods. When you study. The Roman Catholics, they are things. You see, there's all they have the symbols for it. Hallelujah. So when you observe any day as special, then you are no, no, uh, you are, you, you are you no know, uh, attributing your services or whatever to those gods. So God, Apostle Paul started warning these people, even not to even observe that day that God has even ordained for them as Sabbath. God said, have taken you out of those things. Those things are, the, uh, you are slaves to them. Praise the Lord. So the, uh, uh, all, all those days, Israelites were slaves to all those things. And said, you observe them as, as gods. But verse 9, verse 9 says, 
But now, after you have known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and baggly element? Remember, the issues about the law, not about any other thing. So, Apostle Paul was saying, going back to the law, you are turning to the beggarly element. Praise the Lord. Beggarly element to, to which you desire you desire again to be to be in bondage to which you desire again to be in bondage you des you observe days and months and seasons and years i'm afraid for you lest i have labored for you in vain this is it praise the lord so all these things are the things that the Lord Jesus Christ died and took them out of the way, took the Ten Commandments out of the way, the days, observations, and seasons, and years took them out of the way, tightened out of the way, every law out of the way, because the Lord Jesus Christ indicated that all the law hangs on the Ten Commandments. All the laws from Genesis down to Malachi hang on the Ten Commandments. So if he has done away with the Ten Commandments, that means every law has, has, has come to an end. But we didn't know. I didn't know. Praise the Lord. So we were practicing all these things. Even when God called me into the ministry, I've been in ministry for almost 20 years. Hallelujah. And uh, we have been practicing these things. Praise the Lord. We didn't know so that we have been we have been practicing these things all this while. We are receiving tithes. We are observing days and seasons. Sunday was a special day to us, and our dressing is different. Hallelujah! Uh, every Sunday, and then uh, after, apart from that, season like Christmas, we observe it. Hallelujah! On the Christmas day, we decorate our house. We do the uh, this thing, uh, watch night and thirty first night. We uh, celebrate everything. We give gift or we give gift to people. We we prepare special food and we eat. All those things we were doing it, and yet we, I thought that I knew God. And when Jesus Christ was calling me and told me that I, do, I did not know him, I didn't agree with him. I said I knew you, and he said <laughs> he didn't say anything again. Praise the Lord. But he knew that, that one, a time is coming. He will make me to understand why he told me that I don't know him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He knew that a time is coming. He made me to understand that. Uh, understand why he told me that I don't know him. Hallelujah. So the scripture made it clearly. That the scripture says, uh, let me take it again. Let me take it again. From the, from, right? From the, John, first John chapter 2, verse 3. It says, Now by this we know that we know him. If we keep his commandment, praise the Lord. He who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandment, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. I was keeping the Ten Commandments by, by paying tight. I was keeping the Ten Commandments by 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 observing days and seasons, I was keeping the Old Testament commandment. Hallelujah. I was keeping the Old Testament commandment. But, hallelujah, I was claiming that I knew God. And the Lord said, I don't know him. The scripture makes it clear that as long as you are not keeping the new commandment that Jesus Christ has given to you, you don't know him. Let us see the reason why. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ emphatically said that about this thing. Hallelujah. The Lord made us to understand that when you obey his commandment, then you will be his friend. Praise the Lord. Let's see. John chapter 15 verse 12. He said, this is my commandment that you love one another. He said it again. Love one another as I have loved you. Great love has no one than this. That means Jesus Christ said, this love is the greatest love ever. So the old one has made it, it's a small love. The old one is a small love. So you cannot practice the old love, Old Testament love, and then be right before God. He said, this is the greatest love. Hallelujah. Greatest uh, uh, love that ever, has ever come to exist. Praise the Lord. He said, than to, I uh, said, than to lay down one's life for his friend. 
Then verse 14 says, You are my friends if you do what I command you. You are my friends if you do what I command you. You see this? So, you only become a friend of Jesus Christ when you do his new commandment he has given to us. If you don't do, if you don't do them, you are not his friend. He does not know you and you don't know him. That's where people will find themselves in trouble. Hallelujah. When they stand before God, just like I was, I was very sure of knowing Christ. The Lord even told me to my face that I don't know him, but I said, I know you. I didn't open my mouth to say, but in my heart, I doubted it. I said, no, this, this could not be. How can you tell me that I don't know you? Praise the Lord. I didn't accept it. I thought I, lo I know him. I thought I know him. It is now. It's only about one year, look, yeah, one year ago that I got to know him. Praise the Lord. When you took me out of the out of, out of the city and brought me into a village and began to train me, got mosquitoes and all kind of uh, animals riding on us when we're sleeping at night, and things were happening there. And then that's said that is a lesson you have to learn from that. Before you would know me, I have to teach you a lesson. Praise the Lord. And before he opened his, I opened my eyes to know that. Before uh, open my eyes to know that. To know Christ is not about keeping the Ten Commandments. To know Christ is not by doing any other things apart from doing his commandment, the new commandment given to us. As he does not know you and you do not know you don't know him. And that's where the people, Jesus Christ said to the, the people here in the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 21, it says, Not everyone who say who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Not everyone. I was one of them. I was saying, Lord, Lord, I preach about Jesus. I talk about it. We do it crusade with, in the name of Jesus. We do many things, but I did not know him. You know why? I was still keeping the commandments, Ten Commandments. Praise the Lord. How am I keeping the Ten Commandments? Because I pay tight. The fact that I pay tight and also teach people to pay, it means I don't believe in the new, new, new covenant. I don't believe in it. Praise the Lord. The fact that we are observing days and seasons, I don't believe. That is why the Bible, the Paul, Apostle Paul, warned the people, told them, that people are taking it trivia. Many of the things that Apostle Paul said, people don't want to take it serious. But Apostle Paul made it clear that my teaching is not for me. The Lord gave me revelation. The Lord was the one who teach me and I come to teach the church. So they'll be surprised. Many people think that Apostle Paul was speaking from his own mind. Praise the Lord. So they don't want to take the warnings of Apostle Paul serious. And this is the thing they are going to use to judge the, the Christians. Hallelujah. My phone is misbehaving. My, my sister said this. Praise the Lord. You get it. Hallelujah. Mm. Praise the living God. Yo. When I'm, I'm teaching something serious, the phone will begin to misbehave. It's a serious thing. So uh, I said, uh, not everyone will say will enter into the kingdom of God. You know heaven, he said, but he who does the will of the Father in heaven. What is the will of the Father now? In those days, when we talk about the will of the Father, we don't even know. The will of the Father is to believe in Jesus Christ and keep the commandment, the new commandment given to you. That is all. That is why in the book of Revelation, it says, those who believe in Jesus Christ and keep his commandment will enter into the city. Praise the Lord who enter into the city. In those days, we were working for nothing because we were not close to the, the kingdom of heaven. We were not close to it. But I was well, I was so uh, you know, deceived by myself that I know Christ. I know whatever I did that did that. Not knowing there's a simple way to know Christ, which has to do with his commandment. Two main commandments, believing in him and keeping his commandment. And Apostle, Paul, Apostle John said, whoever does not do these things and still claiming that 
There are no Christ. It's a liar. So I was lying to Christ. I was lying to him. I was lying to him. I was lying to him when I was arguing with my in my heart against him. 